Hey pen people, I'm really excited for this video today for a couple of reasons. First of all, do you remember that $2,000 Paniter Matrix fountain pen that I won in a giveaway a while ago and I had a crazy unboxing video for it? Well, I ended up selling that pen. And with some of that money, I bought a new phone. So I finally have a somewhat state-of-the-art phone <laughs> to do my videos with instead of my old dinosaur. So hopefully that'll help improve the quality of my videos significantly. The other reason I'm excited is because today we're going to be comparing the Pilot Explorer and the Pilot Metropolitan fountain pens. I've been wanting to make this video for a while and it just hasn't happened. It's, I don't know, just a little bit more intimidating to talk about two pens. It's probably going to be a longer video, all that kind of stuff. But it's finally happening, so um, I think it's going to be a good one. So. These are two entry-level pilot pens that are both very reliable writers, but um, they, they are very different. Um, they, they have some, some things in common, but ultimately they're pretty different pens. So my goal is to, you know, if, if you have one of these but not the other, maybe this video can help you make an informed decision about whether or not you want to try the other one. Or if you are just getting into fountain pens, or if you want to try your first pilot pen, maybe this can help you decide which one you want to try first. So either way, we're going to dive in. Um, I'll flip the camera and we'll get started. Okie dokie, here we go. So the first thing you'll probably notice is the size difference. It's the first thing I noticed when this came in the mail because I had had Metropolitans for a long time. This one, the Explorer, I actually got my wife for her birthday. Um, I have enabled her. <laughs> um, so that's her fountain pen. She enjoys using it. But anyway, I was surprised when I opened the package and, you know, I was going to go wrap it and stuff. I was like, wait, this is, this is big. This is chonky. It's a big pen, especially in like the, the you know, the entry level area. This just feels like a, a big pen. It's really not that much bigger. I mean, maybe a quarter of an inch longer. I think it's the girth. You know, it doesn't taper off into these, you know, I'm just gonna move this, there we go. It doesn't taper off into these rounded uh, tips as much, it's more flat. So it just stays wider for longer, and then it's a little bit longer. And then when you post it, it's maybe half an inch longer posted. Let's look at unposted here, just ever so slightly longer on the Explorer. Okay, so that gives you some idea of size. Let's talk about the materials these pens are made out of. The Metropolitan is metal. I believe it's brass, anodized brass. No, sorry, not anodized, lacquer, lacquered brass. So you've got kind of this thick, thick-ish coat over a fairly thin um, brass tube. And then you've got a plastic grip section that is opaque and then obviously a steel nib. Um, metal clip. Metal clip here as well. And I like this clip quite a bit. The body is plastic. It has a sheen to it that gives it almost the appearance of metal. It has, it, it's kind of metallic, but it is definitely plastic. It's extremely lightweight compared to the Metropolitan. The Metropolitan's not a heavy pen, um, but it's just slightly heavier. One idea I've heard, and I like this idea, is that you can't mistake lightness for poor quality. A heavy pen is not necessarily a good pen, so um, it just depends on your preference. Do you want a light pen, or do you want one that just, it's not heavy, but it, it, it has some substance in your hand. This one is probably more akin to what you're used to if you're coming from the ballpoint world. Oh, and uh, I forgot to mention, so this, it's a similar grip section on the Explorer. It is translucent though, um, so definitely a different look to it. And you'll notice too that the step, not the step, I don't know, the flare, I guess? Yeah, the flare. It's a different shape. Um, this is more of a smooth, just tapers out, and you're done, this one tapers out, and then there's kind of this edge, this ring around it, and then it goes back in. So this one has, I think, the smoother flare, so if you're somebody that holds a pen right up here, I honestly don't think either one are gonna be an issue for you, but I would say this is more comfortable 
um, slightly if you're going to hold it all the way up here. The nibs are almost identical. I think that the manufacturing process is probably the same. I don't think that there's really a whole lot going on that's different other than the labeling. So the Metropolitan, let's see how closely I can get this to focus. That's not bad. All right, so this is Pilot, Fine, Japan, um, and then it has these little laser etchings on either side to just kind of give it some character. I think it's fun. I think it's a fun nib. Um, you don't really get a lot of style on entry-level nibs usually, and this one has some style. This one is a little more plain, but it's actually one that they use on their, not higher-end pens, but maybe more of their like mid-range kind of pens, like the Pilot Prera, that kind of thing. So it says Pilot, super quality, Japan, fine. I think that super quality is kind of funny. <laughs> it's kind of endearing. I don't think the quality is more super than the Metropolitan. I can't really distinguish uh, a whole lot of difference in the way these pens write. Some people swear that there's a difference, but as far as I'm concerned, there's not. Um, but we'll, we'll test that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll test that theory. I, I haven't really sat down and really written with both of these back to back. So we'll test that in a second here but really it's just the look of it that's different. Um, the feeds are the same, they're the same size. You could swap these nibs back and forth if you wanted to. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention that I think might be important to some people, it's not a huge deal to me, but if you are a step hater, then this has a sort of big step on it. Um, it's not crazy huge, but it's bigger than a lot of pens out there. And then this, uh, the, the Explorer has a much smaller step to it. So if you're someone who holds a pen higher up, maybe you have a preference for this one. I don't know. Honestly, I don't mind holding a pen on the step. It doesn't bug me. Um, but that's just something to be aware of if you pay attention to that kind of thing. Let's talk a little bit more about these caps, actually. So I want to talk about how they post. So the Metropolitan, they're both just friction fit um, or friction, friction, whatever. Um, but you can push it on there and it, it fits pretty well, but because of this tapered design, if you're riding for a long time with it posted, it's going to just kind of wiggle itself loose, I feel like. It's not going to stay crazy, crazy secure on there. I've, I've had these get loose and kind of flop around on me. The Explorer, it's not as tapered and I feel like you're able to get it much more snug on there, and I don't think that's going to go anywhere, even if you're writing for a really long time. Also, this is back weighted, like, not at all. There's no back weight. I can tell an ever so slight difference uh, with the with the cap on, but it's it's almost just as comfortable to write with it posted. The Metropolitan, because the whole thing, or well, because most of it is metal, um, it's not crazy, crazy back weighted, um, but it, it still is a pretty significant difference. So if you're someone who likes to post your pens, but doesn't care for a lot of back weight, then the Explorer is going to be your pen. If you don't mind a little bit of back weight, then um, the Metropolitan should be fine for you. Another thing to consider with these pens and this is just a purely opinion-based thing, but the aesthetic of both pens. Um, that's where these pens are the most different, I would say. You've got this one that is um, very modern and stylish, but it harkens back to a more classic kind of fountain pen. It feels like it's very rooted in the traditional kinds of shapes of fountain pens. It does not look like a cheap pen, even though it's, I don't know what it is now, like $18 or something. Uh, I'd say it punches above its weight class as far as looks go. It's, it's quite nice. Um, so if you are someone who is really looking for a beautiful pen, then this one wins. It really does. So if you want something for the office to keep at your desk um, or whatever, I mean, this is a good pen to carry around and travel with too. I'm not saying it's not, but um, but this is definitely a dressed up pen that can get by in some dressier situations. Um, the Explorer is not as dressy. Um, it has these weird circles that I don't care for a whole lot. 
And the reason for that is because it reminds me of the Pilot Precise pens that have that same circle. And it just, I don't know. <laughs> Why would you take a design element from one of your disposable pens and put it on a pen that is, what is this pen, $24, $25, somewhere in there. It's, it's more expensive than the Metropolitan by a little bit. I don't know. It's not my favorite. The other thing I don't really care for is this enormous logo that's kind of engraved into the pen. I don't know. Something about that just kind of makes the pen feel cheap as well. Maybe it's because I'm used to seeing big logo kinds of things on disposable pens. The funny thing though is that Lamy does the same thing with the Safari and it doesn't bug me at all. I like it. <laughs> so it's just purely preference. It's not really a rational thing necessarily, but I don't know. The clip I do really like the look of. It's very low profile. Um, it's got this matte black finish. It's really nice. So that's, that's nice. Um, these plastic caps at the end, I don't really care for a whole heck of a lot. The one thing I will say about the Explorer is that it has a clear advantage in aesthetics when it comes to color options. Um, both of these pens come in a wide range of colors, but what I don't like about the Metropolitan is only the black, silver, and gold come with a plain middle band here. If you want a blue pen or a purple pen or red or green, they all have these weird print patterns like leopard print and rattlesnake and I don't know, they're just odd to me. And I think it dresses the pen down. It doesn't look as classy and maybe they're fun, but I don't really care for them. So that's why I have the gold and the silver and the black, but I'm not gonna get any other colors of the Metropolitan. But um, with the Explorer, you have a lot of color options and they're all really pretty, you know, this shiny kind of metallic looking thing. Um, so there's some really nice ones, including like just their black one that's really nice because all of these black accents suddenly blend in. It's very, it's a very stealthy looking pen. They also have a demonstrator option, which is kind of cool. But yeah, so aesthetically, there's some pros and cons to both, but this is clearly the classier of the two. One thing that's very different with these pens is the, the cap closure. I mean, they're both snap cap, right? That's not different. But um, this, it goes on right to about there. There's like maybe two millimeters of space and then just a nice little click. This one stops earlier. You start to meet friction here. And then there's this very smooth action and then a click. And it's actually very quiet right now. Um, it's, oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so one funny thing about this pen um, from a longevity standpoint that I'm a little bit concerned about is the capping mechanism wearing out. That's always somewhat of a concern with snap cap pens, but for the most part, you're probably not gonna run into problems for like 10 or 15, 20 years or more, you know? like. Um, I don't know why I keep going back to the Lamy Safari other than the fact that I like it, but there are people that have Lamy Safaris from the 70s and the 80s that still use them. Anyway, but in the almost year that my wife has had this pen, this clicking closure is not quite as secure. It's not quite as satisfying. It used to feel just amazing. It was like this very soft, pillowy, and then a very satisfying click. I've heard that the Pilot Prera, which I've not tried myself, I've heard that that has a very satisfying snap cap, and I wonder if it's a similar design for this one. Um, there's just something about that, that pressure that you meet earlier on, and, that, and then that smooth sliding on to the click. Anyway, those are just really little details, um, but I don't know, maybe they matter to some people. But, and this does matter, um, I feel like my Metropolitans still snap closed just about as good as the day I got them. I don't really sense a lot of change there. Maybe there's a little bit of a break-in that's happened where they close a little bit more simply, but 
they're still pretty doggone secure. I'm pulling on this thing and it's not coming apart for until I really put some effort into it. This, it just comes right off. You may have noticed earlier me just kind of fiddling with the pen and accidentally taking the cap off. Um, that's not how it will feel when you buy it. It may feel like that after a while. And it might just be a fluke with this pen, this particular unit. I don't know, maybe you'll have better luck with yours. For some reason, I have weirdly bad luck with pens. I try really hard to be careful with them, and I still run into issues with some of my pens. But anyway, related to the, the snap cap wearing in, wearing out, that kind of thing, um, Let's just talk quickly about some durability, longevity kinds of things. So one misconception people can have is that a metal pen is automatically more durable than a plastic pen. That's not really the case. If, if you were to drop this pen from any kind of height onto concrete, it's just gonna bounce and land and it's gonna be fine. Yeah, it's gonna get a little scratched, but it's gonna be fine. Um, the metal on this is actually fairly soft. Uh, it's fairly thin. It's like the durab the, the the construction is is very durable. It's it feels very well put together, but um, but I have I, I dropped a metropolitan cap once onto concrete like this, and it bent it. There was an edge um, that it put on it, and I had to bend it back out. Um, so that kind of thing can be an issue. Honestly, I feel like they're both fairly durable pens, um, but uh, the change in the capping closure on this one makes me suspicious of the longevity of this one. As far as scratches go, um, both of them feel fairly scratch resistant. Scratches are inevitable on most pens. Um, eventually, you can see just a little bit of scratching here. Nothing crazy, honestly. Um, so that's pretty decent. Um, I don't notice a whole lot of stuff on this one, but I brought my gold one so that I can show you there is some scratching there in the lacquer. So yeah, again, it's not a big deal. I'm not going to take points off of either pen because they got scratches on them. It's just what happens, but um, it's a good thing to know about. All right, two more things. Let's talk about the converter options for both of these. And then I will show you a writing sample and we'll quickly just compare both nibs just to see if there are any differences. So um, both of these pens can fit the squeeze converter. This comes with a squeeze converter and I believe this does as well. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure it does. Check on that before you buy it. But, um, but I'm pretty sure both of these come with a converter, as well as a cartridge, of course. A lot of people don't love the squeeze converters because you can't see your ink level, um, but they are pretty reliable and the ink capacity is pretty good. So there are pros and cons there. But the the old Con 50 and the newer Con 40, hopefully I'm not getting those mixed up, um, they both fit. Um, the one difference though, because this pen is longer, it fits the Con 70, which is the bigger um, pilot converter that fits some of the more high-end pens, you know, like the Custom 74 and some of those other ones with gold nibs, they fit the Con 70, which is a weird converter that not everyone likes, but the ink capacity is pretty awesome. So if ink capacity is something that you um, care a lot about, then this is definitely gonna be your pen, especially since the Con 40 is kind of awful. You, it's kind of impossible to get a full fill unless you use a syringe, which is annoying, or you do some kind of weird gymnastics with your pen to get it fully filled, and which is also annoying. But uh, anyway, so this is gonna have way more ink capacity if you get the Con 70 to go with it. So. Those are all the pros and cons and most of the comparison issues. Let's just take a quick look at a writing sample that I prepared here. Let's see if I can get this to zoom out. Haha, -ha, look at that. Sorry about my tripod there. Um, this is a poem of mine, actually. Hope you don't mind me sharing something that I have written. Um, and this was published, I believe, in February. So it's been a couple of months 
It's called Tornado Watch for those of you in the South or the Midwest of the United States and maybe other countries too. I'm not as familiar with other countries' weather, but um, anyway, if you're in the United States in the South or Midwest, then you probably have been on a Tornado Watch once or twice. And so that's basically, I mean, you know, you're familiar with like the, the watch status of, of weather, you know, uh, um, it's just, it means that like, it's not guaranteed to happen, but keep an eye out just in case. But I wrote this poem when I was living in Kentucky and I wrote it with this idea in mind of trying to capture what it feels like to be looking at the possibility of a tornado, even if that possibility is unlikely because it's a little bit scary. And this poem was published in the Bookends Review. It's a little online journal. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. And it says, children search clouds for bunnies and puppy dogs, but find only stampedes of thundering water buffalo, spooked and hail horned, tsunamis of great whites foaming at the mouth, air coils around their ankles, like snakes poised to swallow whole. Yeah, again, if you've ever experienced a tornado watch or tornado warning, even if you don't see a tornado, there is some crazy stuff that can happen with the wind and the clouds and the rain. And some of these storms are just really impressive and crazy to watch. And I just thought of like, you know, kids like to look up at clouds sometimes and be like, hey, look, that one's a rabbit or whatever. And just this idea that when you get into these really intense, big storms, you're not looking for rabbits, you're looking for tornadoes, you're looking for things that could eat you. So um, yeah, so that's what that poem is about. And also, I actually edit people's poetry, like for a living. <laughs> not just poetry, I do a lot of stuff. I do resumes and cover letters and short stories and personal statements and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, that is how I am making my living right now. I have, a, I have my own business that I'm building and it's been really exciting and scary at the same time to be reliant on myself completely instead of somebody else's business, but it's been fun. So if you want to check that out, if you want to have me look at some of your writing, whether it's for business or some kind of application, or if it's creative writing, I'd love to take a look. And I will have a link in the description to my Fiverr account where you can contact me there. Okay, last thing, let's open these pens up and let's just take a closer look at these nibs and the way they write. So these are both fine nibs. Um, the, you know, they're pilot Japanese fines. They're very, very fine. Um, even finer than some other extra fine nibs that I've used. So um, let's see. La, 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 la. I don't really know what I'm doing. All right, but there's the Explorer. Here's the Metropolitan. Okay, so that's interesting. I'm definitely getting more ink flow on the Metropolitan. It's writing wetter than this one is. And honestly though, they feel very, very similar. Um, there is a little bit of tooth to them because they're so fine, but honestly, they are shockingly smooth for such a fine nib. They are great, great little nibs um, if you're into fine pens. And if you're not, um, the mediums that these come in are also wonderful. So difference in flow, I don't know if that's a difference between the models or just these individual nibs, because I think that whenever you're manufacturing something this precise, there's gonna be slight nuances nib to nib. So it might just be luck of the draw, whether you get you know this one or this one. It might not be Metropolitan versus Explorer. But either way, they're very similar. They're very close. But I'm curious to know what your experience has been. Do you find the Explorer to be drier than the Metropolitan? I don't know. But, um, but I think that that is all I have for this review. Um, both good pens. I can recommend both of them, as long as you're okay taking a risk on maybe your <laughs> cap mechanism thing wearing out. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will talk to you later. Bye.